Hello everyone, welcome back. Professor Piyush here. I hope you guys are practicing from my previous videos and continuing through this course. So today I came up with an interesting exercise, a little little complex than the previous ones which we have done. This is an elliptical bridge, which is a proposed bridge by Enda Design House. It was proposed as a part of competition launch. This bridge is going to reside in England. So you can find these images in the Arch Daily website. I, was, I have put down the link in the description as well. This is the view from the pedestrians. These are all uh, renders. We call it some proposal. There are a lot of schematic drawings also. You can see how the truss is coming from the bottom and how the ellipse is holding up. And there is a building there below that bridge as well, just connecting the, both the sides. This is a view on, from the top on the top of the bridge. This is a schematic conceptual evolution of the bridge. You know how the concept happened, how they raised the land, and how they come up with this idea. You can go through these images as well. But mostly, I'll be using reference images where they have dimensions, something like this, right? You get the uh, get the width of the bridge here, right? And uh, here you get the width of the curve from curve to curve length and the levels. This is a cross section of uh, the truss below the bridge and how the the plinth the handrails are coming up from the bridge so we'll be using this as well this is a section overall section which shows the length of the bridge here you can see 67.5 meters so we'll be using these uh, as a reference as well we are not going to exactly go, go into too much of detail but yes the conceptual drawings how overall scheme of this bridge is we'll definitely cover that so let's start so i have already prepared the model i will just reverse engineer it and we'll show you how it has been done step by step so let me hide this first and let me open the floor the bridge floor layer is open and if i go to the top view i've already mm, selected this profile of the you know the base floor i can unlock this to just show you okay so i will just with the dimensions i will just show you how it has been done so first thing you take the line command you can just type L if you have already imported the AutoCAD shortcuts as I have already explained in my previous videos how to do that. Or you can just go to the line tool set here, right? And can bring the line from the midpoint or single line or the poly line, whatever you are comfortable with. But here, the line from the midpoint will be more helpful. I prefer taking from the shortcut. So L spacebar. Here also I get an option of, you know, making a line from the midpoint, like both sides. If I click this, uh, I can you know start a line from the center so i need to go to the start it from the origin so i will type zero right and i will just hold my shift key and i will just bring my cursor on both these sides to find the midpoint you can do that by you know keep your smart track on at the bottom it will give you ideas like this and when i got the midpoint i will just click it if you see at the bottom the dimensions you can see 30.250 meters Previously, if you remember, when I showed you the image, the length of the bridge was around 67.5 meters. You can see here in the section. So I'm just, you know, I'm also taking the curve into account. So lump sum, I'm taking around 61 meters and then the curve. Now I will just select this and will move it from the origin. Move M spacebar or you can go down here. If you have done previous exercises, it won't be difficult for you to do the move now. So if you want to move it from the origin, type 0 and just hold the shift key and when it intersects just click right because i have logged these lines reference lines so it is showing gray here now remaining portion is the arc to make an arc what i have done i have filleted the two length the remaining length of 67.5 so if you see the the length of this line i have taken is 60.5 so the remaining length which is around 7 meters i have divided both the sides so uh, i will just use the line command and make 3.5 meter line and then same i will make like this right 3.5 meters and then i have just filleted this so fillet f or you can go here use the fillet curves command right and set the radius to 3.5 because i i need to be full filleted fully so i will select this line and this line and i will get the arc automatically and then I will just mirror this mi spacebar or you can you know type mirror fully if it's if the shortcuts are not there with you spacebar type 0 
and hold the shift key it will copy mirror there then you can copy the whole line mirror space bar type 0 this time mirror on other side like this and the base of your floor is done so now if you see in this image you will see there is there is a pipe coming outside also which is flush to the floor place so we'll create a curve for this as well so that later on we can convert it into a pipe it's very simple i will just offset it to 1 meters on both the side so for that i will bring offset curve command or just offset also will do it will straight away offset the curve so and one more thing yes i need to join them as well right that is good to join these curves then offset it again off, sorry offset curve change the distance you can make it one here space bar and offset Right click, bring the command again and offset again. Let's do the next step. So now if you see in this cross section, the parapet handrail, the parapet actually a little slanted. You know we have taken the width of the bridge as 2.55 meters. So consider this as a little slanted portion and uh, from this point to this point we can assume it can be around 3 meters let's say. So let's round it off to 3 meters. And then you know create similar curved lines for the top handrail as well. And then we will, you know, divide these points and then join and, you know, create connectors also. So let's go to perspective and simply what I will do, the fastest way, I will select both of these flat bays because the parapet is, handrail is standing, starting from here itself. And I will click this blue icon and I will type, let's say I, I take it, the height should be 1 meters. Yeah, sorry. So I, to, you know, copy and move you just press alt key first and then click this blue icon and then type one and then enter it will you know copy and move also so but this is not slanted so what i will do from the top view if will, i will just select this curve and i will move it towards green axis 0.225 why 0.225 as i said before the width we have taken at the bottom here where the moving the pedestrian floor is is around 2.550 meters and the remaining uh, you know the top from handrail to handrail is around 3 meters so equally i am dividing the remaining uh, remaining uh, dimension right so 0.225 on both sides same way i will select this curve sorry select this curve and i will type minus 0.225 this time and move it you see in the perspective we have got a slanted thing here perfect this is done. Next step will be to divide these parapets and you know give them curves for the connectors and the top handrail, the section and everything. Let's do that. So there are two ways to do it. Either I can use do it in Rhino itself, you know, divide the curve. So I will select this curve, use divide, right? Number of segments. I am taking 73. For now, you can choose your own. Right, so let's take 73 and space bar. Now you can see we have 73 points on this curve. Same way I will select uh, opposite curve to this on the flat. We are, we are doing it in the flat, remember. And then space bar, space bar. So we have 73 points. To do it in Rhino, one by one I have to, you know, join these points. And later on when the distance become equal after this arc, I can just, you know, copy it multiple times. I can show you a faster way also. Let's go back. That can be done using grasshopper. So I will just type grasshopper in its space bar. Uh, it will come on the side. Right? I will just something like this. Yeah, this is perfect. So in grasshopper, uh, just briefly I will tell you how to do things. Just take example, simple example of this. So I need to contain these curves into the grasshopper. Right? I need to import these curves into the grasshopper. So the best way to do is instead of I can make straight away curve in grasshopper also, but currently it's there. So the fastest way is I will bring grasshopper containers or which is also known as params. So from there, if I just hit space bar, I can bring curve. Right. So to know from where we have taken it, just uh, use control alt and click on the icon. It will show you with the red arrows from where it has been taken. You can see it is from the params. And the circled one is the container. So what the container do is it will store your data from the Rhino to Grasshopper. So uh, you know it copies from there to here. 
So it becomes a grasshopper data and then you can do whatever you want from there. So how to import this? Right click, set one curve, right? I will select this one first. You can see it has become green. That means it has been imported to grasshopper. Same way, I'll just copy this again because there are two curves. So I'll again right click this and this time set one curve and select the opposite one, the flat one. And it has also become green. Now we have curve one and curve two, you can see in grasshopper. So you can't select them in Rhino. Rhino curves are different, right? If I go in Rhino I, and you know, I can't see those curves here. I can only select Rhino curves. So let's say if I hide this, right? And you can see the red one is the grasshopper curve. Okay, so both are there. Now, I need to divide this curve as I did in Rhino. But yes, I can control that divisions in Grasshopper, which was not possible in Rhino itself. There is also a component in Grasshopper, which is called Divide Curve. I will just hit space bar. When you hit space bar, it opens the search keyboard, Divide Curve. In this, you will see it will ask for the curve. So, I want to divide this curve first. And you can see by default, because in the count, by default, it was 10. So, uh, I can control this. I can use number slider for that. It's spacebar again and just type, you know, the number, let's say 72, right? So, it, it starts from slider from 0 to 100. I will be using 72. So, from 0 to 72, it becomes 73 divisions, right? I will show you later. So, I'll put it here. You can see my whole curve is divided, the red ones. And if I go to the points here, you can see there are seven, it is showing me 73 points in the data set, right? So just follow these simple steps. Even if you are new to the Grasshopper, you can just follow it along with me and you know try to understand what's the difference because I'm showing you both ways, right? But that becomes very tedious process, you know, joining one by one, copying, and let's say you want to change the number of divisions later on, that becomes a headache. So this seems a faster, you can just use Grasshopper in those methods where you want to just you know, shut down the repetitive process, uh, iterative process as well. So now this curve is done and then comes the second one. So I will do the same. I will just copy this as it is. Control C, Control V. You can copy like this also and bring it down. Now instead of this curve, I will add this curve here, right? And it will automatically do the same for the other curve as well. Now, let's say I want to ch change the divisions or to make it more parametric, I can use the same slider for both something like this, right? So if I change from one slider, automatically the divisions will change on both the curves, which was not possible if I would have separate sliders. I would have to do match the numbers on both the sliders. So this becomes more parametric. So I will just go back to 72 here. Now we have got 73 points here and 73 points here, these two. I need to join these points and create a line, which is a faster way in Grasshopper. So I will just bring line command, L-I-N-E, you type. There's a line command in Grasshopper as well point set of points one set of points two you can make it any point at the start or end doesn't matter now it will give you a join line how to now this is not a rhino file right if i go to grasshopper uh, sorry if i go to rhino interface and i try to select these lines it, it, it's not happening because it's not part of rhino yet so how to bring it just i will hide all these things now because they are not required i just need these lines for now so I will select this line set and I will click my middle mouse scroll. It will bring me an orbit like this from where I can just click bake. Bake means it will cook basically and it will bake those lines and will it will give you a finished line in Rhino. Itself. But the grasshopper lines doesn't get deleted or removed or get damaged anyways. So if I click bake and if I hide this now, you can you see this is the disable preview button here. And you can see those lines are now baked in Rhino and I can select them, right? Later on, let's say I, want, I don't want these lines and divisions are more or less and you want to change. You can straight away go and delete these lines and just go back to the grasshopper. Just middle mouse click on the line set and let's say change the number of divisions and then go back again and the middle mouse click and you can bake them and hide this and you can see it, it just came to Rhino itself. So this helps. In iterative your design in a faster way which in case of rhino wouldn't be possible so i'll go back to the same 72 points 73 points go to the top and see how many are there okay 55 so i came back to this now 73 curves added in selection this is what i wanted 
Now, same thing I want to do with, between this curve and this curve, right? So, let's see how can we do that in Grasshopper. So, if you see this curve was already taken, right? So, I will on this for now and I will copy this container again and insert the another one, set one curve, the top one, sorry, set one curve, yeah. So, I have this curve and this curve now. You can see both are green. Now, this curve was already divided into 70 parts so I will just use the same divide curve component control C control V and instead of this curve here I will insert this one right and the number of divisions I will use the same slider so that you know it remains the same the divisions right we have same 73 points and I will bring the line component control C control V and this time these are the points I will just unhide it first so these are the points which I want to join with these points right so uh, i will select this as a start point and you know this will be my end points and i will unhide this line this is also not uh, unhidden and you can see my lines have joined perfectly and it is matching with the line from the bottom as well faster right imagine doing this in rhino and you know selecting the curve, top curve and dividing and then joining line and then copying it becomes a lengthy process right so you can follow this either you can do the same for this side or you can just mirror these lines after baking but i will recommend you create another set of grasshoppers you know a script like this create those lines let me show you how it's better to organize also keep organizing your script in between for a better view okay so this time i need this curve let me on this yes this curve and i will just copy this set Control C, Control V again at the bottom, and I need to change this curve to the top one, which is this one, right? So I will right click and set one curve. Now I have this curve and this curve. Divisions are same already using the same slider, so it's okay. I can just unhide it now just to see, right? You can see these points. I need to join them. Same method. I will copy this line component now here and this will be my start point or this can also be a start point doesn't matter the start point and end point and straight away my lines are done now once you are done with these things again you can do the same you can just select this line and this line and just middle mouse click and bake it and hide everything here right you don't need it to visualize now and your bridge with the curves for the parapet and the handrail curve and everything is ready so next we will be creating the truss portion so if you see here this is the truss system of that bridge if i go back to the section this one you can see here how the truss is having a curve here this is not a straight truss and the bridge is also going down and the curve closer here smaller here and then it enlarges till it hits the bottom here right so what i will do i will try to just take an abstract of the profile the curve profile which is happening because we don't have exact dimensions in this but we'll use this image as a trace and we'll scale the image accordingly for that i have to import this image in rhino so let's do that to import any image in rhino you can just go to the surface tool set here right surface creation set where you'll find a picture plane or you can just type picture in the command line the top and spacebar and i will import this section but for that you need to go in the front view first then type zero to start from the origin and just place it like this don't worry about scale now because we are going to scale it come closer to the arrow point just make a line from this arrow of 67.5 meters 67.5 spacebar don't click now so you will see the line is already done you need to hold shift and then click to get a straight line then you need to scale it in a two dimension so you can go to the scale command here where you have different scaling versions i need to scale it in 2d so i'll select the image and then it will ask me uh, yeah after selection you can just right click and then give the base point this is my first base point now instead of reference factor i will just give reference points so that's my first reference point right this end arrow i need to enlarge this image and that becomes my second reference point so now this image is scale based on this length of the bridge what i need to do is i need to match with the bridge which i have already created this length if you remember 
the total length I have taken 67.5. So I will select this image and will use this uh, you know grid box to pan my image and try to match it with this right somehow almost just eyeball it don't need to be so accurate in that you're just learning the art of modeling in this right you can delete this line if you want you can hide or delete it now to get the curve you see these the bridge here is slanted so if i take this profile and try to bring it here it will become a little difficult because this is already a straight thing so what i will do i will just select the image i will rotate r o rotate and take the center of the image and try to rotate in some direction and try to keep the bridge straight sorry and then i will bring this image down just to eyeball and match it with the bridge thing right still i will rotate again you can disable the points if they are disturbing you for now and i can off the smart track right it becomes more smoother straighter okay this seems a little fine then what you can do is you can trace this truss line right from here using the control point curve right something like this try to be minimum in your points because using these control points later on you can control the curve that's it so you get a subtle profile you can just put make a separate layer inside new model a separate sub layer as image or images if we will be importing certain other images so i will just keep them in the same layer change object layer and you can hide this okay so we got this subtle curve next we need to create a triangular truss like this right and then later on when the whole curve system is ready i will just provide you know pipes and rectangular sections wherever required you can see there are certain dimensions given so it's good that we will use these dimensions like steel pipe 8 cm dia beam sections 5 by 5 and then uh, truss pipe the bigger one carrying truss pipe section of radius 12 mm so we will all we will use all these dimensions later but first we need to create the truss arrangement so we need to outline that now what i have done here is i have uh, chopped off the curve a little bit from where the bridge is taking a curve right if you see from the top portion i have taken this point and this point as a reference and then uh, i'll be making a truss on that okay so before that what i need to do is i need to divide this curve and this curve so that i can join if you see in the image you can see this point right it's joined from the outer uh, steel pipe so for this again what you can do either uh, you can you know select this curve use the divide component right divide uh, command and number of segments i am taking 61 here right so it will give me total 62 divisions space bar so you get these points and you can just use the line command join from this point to this point and then array copy array linear copy select the thing to copy number of items can be 61 first reference point and second reference point right so you can see easily all my truss lines are done you know copied this one is remaining you can just copy this co copy copy and put it here right so this is one way another way is same way you know you can use the grasshopper script let's say i will just take it off i will bring back my grasshopper you can go to perspective and again i will bring the curve container here to store the data first of all sorry for my scroll button into chaos i need to buy the new one yeah so curve right click set one curve take this right copy this control c control v right click set one curve take this so we have both the curves we will do the same right divide curve component as we did before divide curve right one curve count either you can use number slider as we are fixing the count here uh, i will just you know right click and go to set integer by default it is 10 here that's why you can see 10 points and just type 62 or 61 to get 62 points yeah you can check here you can see if you bring your mouse yeah so count is 61 so you get total 62 points out of it okay so it's like 62 divisions so 60 61 divisions so you will get 62 points now you can either project line from these points 
but the best way is to join two points right so same thing i will do for this curve as all as well control c control v curve count will be same now i just have to join this using the line command or line tool set component line this one create a line between two points right start start and end so you got your lines this helps in an iterative method also later on let's say i want to you know you are in a designing process and you are checking something and you want to see what things are working or not you can use this okay one more thing what happened here if you see uh, it has the curve which has taken just taken the whole curve right so again what i will do i will just first of all hide all these things and uh, this is taken the whole curve but that's what that's uh, i don't want so i'll set one curve and i will control shift and select this one or i will delete this and again bring the curve component this time i will select this control shift to isolate selection control shift it will select if you only click so if, if you only select because these lines are joined it will select the whole line so if you had control shift it will take that part only you can see from this side also it has not taken the curve let's see what happens if i right click and now set one curve but it's still taking the whole curve right so what i will do is i will clear the values right and then uh, i will explode it for now right now when i select it has taken two different curves now i will right click set one curve and give that now it is this only same thing i will do for the other proportion i will explode you can explode from here control c control v sorry in the grasshopper control c control v set one curve give this one this side now everything is same I, we don't have to change much in this you can just now just input the data and if you if i unhide the line now you will see it is joining the lines only so let's see in the top view perfect now this is what we have done when we did in rhino it is coming the same so same thing just middle mouse click in uh, grasshopper and bake it and hide it hide these curses also we don't need for now so we are done with the base here right we have the trust form now you can see we got the points uh, from where i can you know just join these and create triangles something like this and we'll repeat this all over the lines again if it's a repetitive task here we can do either in rhino like because copying here will be an issue why because uh, the sizes are different right and you have to divide this curve also in the same number of divisions as these so that you get the settled curve so who can save you in this of course grasshopper now you decide like you can try yourself uh, I, I can give you an idea how to do it like you know you can you, first you need to take this curve like a curve container create a separate curve container i will show you also but just you know you can try yourself curve container select this curve put them in there in that curve container and divide that into 61 divisions the count which you have given before 61 count right so you get 62 points out of it and then you can join straight away those points right you can join the lines simple so let's do that and see so first we are going to make the entrance right this one straight ones which are starting smaller and then getting larger and larger then we will come to the triangle and these all these trusses are finally inserting or getting welded to the pipe so let's let's start with the end first so i will take help of grasshopper you can just select this if you want to do it in rhino you can just select this use the divide tool right 61 segments and then you have these uh, this center line is there actually it's not there so you can make that center line so i will just hide this bottom one just to avoid confusion right points are already there you can use the select point components and delete them for now and just you have to use this midpoint snap and you know join midpoint to midpoint just to create a straight line so now we have line also the middle line right don't get confused with too many lines so when you do step by step you will understand now i will bring the I will bring the trust line also right so i was telling either you can select this in rhino and divide into 61 segments right and let's take the straight line also on the top and do the same for this right and then join these lines one by one right straight lines start joining them right and then create n something like this 
So that will take a lot of time. So I will tell you how we, we can create a script for this in Grasshopper. So let's go to uh, Grasshopper and see. So first thing we need to put this curve data again. So curve container and we need two of them. So control C, control V, you can do it in advance. Now select this one, right click, set one curve. Already my curve was selected, so it got there. Second one, set one curve. Now I need this one. So if you are confused with the lines, what you can do is you can uh, now hide all of this, right? Because we have already have the grasshopper lines. So we don't need them for now. So 62 divisions, right? So you can straight away use this script because it was already created for those curves. Now instead of that curves, you can just input these curves now and hide the line by you can see straight away it will give you a line i hope you understand this how uh, let me open this right because this component is common it, it divides the curve in already count was given to this 61 so i just in instead of this curve i have just inputted this curve so it has done the same for that as well now the trick here is how to join cross points right so if you see in grasshopper what happens for every uh, data set it creates a list right let me show you how it works so panel and if i bring this data here you will see this is the list of lines which is there so as if you bring your mouse it will say 62 lines so we have 62 lines and for every line it is giving me the length of the line right the data about the line so this is the data here i can index this li list like a content page or 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 a, or a content page of an ebook or something or any content page, you know, where I can just click and go to a certain page or a certain section of a book in an ebook or, or in an e uh, interactive PDF, likewise. The so same way, if I create the list index, I can, you know, just remove this point from the, that list and start joining these points to that point. So I have to create a separate list from uh, in which this set of points, because I need to, I don't need to join this point to this point because it's already joined. I need to start from this point and join it to this one the second point right so i need to remove this point from this list which is already there the point the 62 points are there so how to do that there is a component called cull index if you hit space bar and type type cull index i will just show you control alt and click you will see you will find it in the sets of your grasshopper uh, you will see cull index here these are part of the sequences right so what does what this cull index do it basically removes the point if you whatever the numbers you give it so, so let's let's see uh, i will take this set of points and i will insert this data into the list right so i have say 62 set of points here now yeah, if i re, you know select this in this and set integer to let's say zero because the list always starts from zero right as i've shown you uh, previously how in the using the panel see the first point the first number in the list is a zero then one two three like this right so I have removed zero in this. So if I select this now, if I see, uh, it is removing this point, right? So this also can work. I can start from here, but uh, let me remove the last point, which will be the sixty-one. So uh, I can type sixty-two actually. So if I select, let's try sixty-one. Yeah, now it is removing this endpoint. So this is the list which I want to, you know, start join. These are the list of points which I want to join with the top, the top points, right? But the problem here is, if you see, uh, this point also the this point has this list has sixty two points and this list has sixty one points. So when I will use the line component and you know uh, select these points as a start point and this point as end point, I won't get lines on every point. Why? Because the data is not matching, the numbers are not matching, right? You see this set of points and this set of points. So I will get only at the first point and then it will start joining the horizontal ones. So how to solve this problem? Let me delete this. So as we have taken uh, this point, right? Same way, uh, the end point, if you go here, the end point won't be joining any angular lines, right? So it will end here only. So let me show you. I will just again use this index controls control c control v and now i will remove from this set of points so but you see the in in the indices already 61 number was given so it will also remove from this side right so it is something like this but we won't uh, uh, in this 
in this list I want to include this point and take out this last one. So I will reverse it, right? Either I can reverse it or I can change the indices. So this time I can write write zero and commit changes. So you see, now I have 61 points here also and 61 points here also. And uh, in this list, it starts from this point. Let's see what happens when I make a line in this. Will it work or not? So again, I will bring the line component. Start point, end point. Perfect. It worked. Nice. Right? So this is the small tricks which you can do to, you know, make your work faster using Grasshopper. Once you slowly, slowly, you will understand what is the task you want to do. Start with the smaller ones, especially start playing with lines. Right? So when it comes to complex geometry, you will understand how it works. Right? So I will hide all, all of these things. I will just bake this and hide this and I will bring all my curves also. Right? Okay. Okay, this line also I will uh, bake and hide this again. Right? So the, our end truss is done. Next is the task to make triangle. So for triangle, if you remember, already we have given this curve previously. Right? See this one. Okay? This curves were already there and those were the set of points you need to join to this, the, the bottom set of curve, this one, right. So let me select these things again and hide it. This is what we want to do, right. We need to join this point to this point to this point and likewise. Divisions are same, 61, 61. So I will bring out the points, right, at the bottom, these are 62 points. And uh, what about this set? Yes. And this set. Okay. So, we got all the points here. We just need to join them. So, first, let's start with this set of points and this set of points. So, I will bring the line component. Control C, Control V. You can copy this. Right. Just, just follow the points. Don't get confused in this. You, you make sure in your mind which points you are joining. And, you know, you can select and understand, okay, which is which set of points. So, this can be my start point or this can be my start point. So, I will insert this. Already it was there. And uh, now this is my end point. So, I will bring this component and make this as an end point. And you can see I have created a triangle, or, uh, one edge of a triangle, right? Perfectly. So, if I do the same trick or the same uh, step in Rhino, you can see how much time it will take one by one to join these lines. Same way now, you have done, done these points. Now, you need to join this set of points to this set of points, right? So, uh, Again, you will copy this line component, right? And just keep an eye on the points which you want to join. It can be start line and you've got another set of lines, right? Next, the if you see the image, so this is done, okay? I will just uh, select my triangle lines. You can join them later also. You can join here as well, right? It's totally up to you. It doesn't matter. Anyways, I'm going to use these grasshopper lines again and, you know, to provide pipes and uh, rectangular frames. So, uh, for just for your understanding, I am just baking it, but uh, you know, you can do the whole process all together. I am chopping the whole steps so that you can easily understand. You can bake these two triangles again and just hide everything up and bring back the whole set. Now, you can see I have got this. My truss is there, my base is there, my cables, uh, sorry, the pipes, truss pipes, the parapet uh, sections and the bottom pipes. All things, the curves, the base of all those things are ready. Next, I will be just giving thickness to them one by one using the reference of the images as I showed you before. So, let's jump into that. So, in the image, you can see uh, we will be making this the parapet sections, which starts from here and goes down to the bottom, you know, connecting beam to the bottom and then going up. And then there is a handrail. We will make handrail also later. So, let's complete this portion first. So, if you see here, they have given the size of 5 by 5 centimeter, right, square hollow section. So, uh, I will take these uh, members also the same, right, just will follow along, right. So, let's go back to Grasshopper. One way is I will use uh, Rhino method where, you know, I will just create one shape and this will follow along, right. So, if, if you are facing problem like this, this zooming thing, you can just select the element which you want to see closer and just use zoom select. Then it will rotate properly. Okay. If you see uh, sections starting from where the curve is starting, right? These sections, they are increasing in dimensions, right? And their uh, elements, they are also increasing, right? So uh, we will make them later. But first, you can take 
the elements which are you know these members the square section members which are same this you can copy all along so first of all after selecting all of them you can just use join command j right and join the edges so it becomes one right these red ones which you are seeing they are actually grasshopper files which are already open i will show you how to make that in grasshopper as well faster right so this is done what you need now is a square hollow section shape here at this point so for that bring rec rectangle you can use a round curve you can type a or you can just click this this will help you to make a rectangle around any curve like normal to any curve and it will ask you to select the curve this is my curve you can take the point and then start making the rectangle right so you can type the dimension as you uh, as i told you before 5 cm so my units are meters so point 0, 0.05 space bar and again for another dimension 0 0.05 space bar right so you got a hollow section shape now you just have to swipe it along this rail so for that if you remember previous videos we have used sweep one command like sweep one or you can get it in standard tool set under surface creation toolbar this one sweep one sweep two so currently i have only one rail to sweep so that's why i'm taking sweep one i will select the rail and straight away i will select the shape then only you press enter then press enter again and click ok keep the settings default this is what we wanted now you can select the object and go to solid tools and cap it along you can use this so this becomes a solid now one more thing this uh, pipe is starting from the center but what actually we want we want it to run it along the bottom so that you know i can provide a bridge flow here so for that let's go a few steps back select this rectangle which you have the square which you have done take it from the midpoint and move it to this edge and then use sweep one again select the rail select the sections spacebar spacebar select the object and cap it this is what we wanted you can see now we have a surface where we can you know put the floor of the bridge now we have got this section right similar to this what we can do is instead of making one by one on every section we can just take this uh, object solid object and array linear copy number of items you can choose let's say 60 spacebar first reference point can be from the midpoint and midpoint to the other sections right so you can see it has followed along beautifully because all the sizes at this portion is same until unless the curve starts here so you can again the zooming is an issue i will select this and i will use zoom select and i can move along i think you can copy one more it is also same just use copy c o p y copy sorry select the object take from the midpoint and put it on that section right and further onwards the sizes are changing so what we can you can do you can follow the same rectangle size here and you know sweep it along instead of doing on both the sides you can complete one side and then mirror it from the center but how can i do uh, those things in one single shot instead of you know copying and making on one by one on this and then even if i want to change the shape of the rectangle later i don't have those choice right so i have to do go uh, the process all over again so i will tell you another way which you know we can do the same process in grasshopper let's go a few steps back you don't need this rectangle shape also now i will just off the rhino lines and we'll keep the grass super lines here just for just to avoid confusion again i will off all other uh, truss lines also in grass super as well and we'll keep the bridge line only right so i will select these and we'll zoom this is what we want to do we need to cover these sections okay so this is side line this is the bottom floor one and this is the side so what you can do you can join them so i will uh, hit space bar and bring join curve component right so I can put multiple data in one input, right? This is the input and this side is an output. So I can put multiple data in one input. Uh, like let's say if I want this line here, but if I uh, bring this line also and do this, the top line will go off automatically. So what, what you can do is when you're inserting another data in the same input, just hold shift key, you will see a plus sign will occur and you can you know, add as many data as possible. If you select this now, join curve, you can see all my curves are joined all together right i can bring, bring this down for now next uh, as we did in rhino i need to create a shape here so that 
I can swipe it along because it's a rectangle. That's why. Otherwise, uh, if, if it would have been a circular pipe, which is there in some cases, right? Like the bottom truss. So that would have been super easy. I would just should have used pipe component and would have done that. In Rhino also, it could have been faster. So it's a square. So I will bring the rectangle component and will convert it into a square. It is currently it is happening at the origin, but I need to you know bring them here all the rectangles. For that, I need to have the points here. I need to know the points. So already, if you remember, we have the points. I will just unhide them. We have the points before when we divided this top curve, and I will put them in the points container, separate point container, so that I can use it. Insert all the points here and bring this down as well. Now to avoid these wire tangling, what you can do, you can just right click and go to wire display settings and just make it hidden so it becomes like a Wi-Fi connection here. Now insert this point in that and the moment you do that you can see the default rectangle which is you know based on these sizes minus 1 to minus minus 1 to minus 1 x and y sizes it has already created a rectangle but we already have a, a size so we will use that but to um, do that you need to create a domain range because if I make a rectangle of let's say 0 0.05 as we took before and use the number sliders on both the, um, you know x y same it will make a rectangle from this corner but if you remember in rhino i we need to push this uh, from the midpoint at this edge so how to do that in grasshopper for that you have to create a domain range so that you know you can move the rectangle both plus and minus so i will bring construct domain component right single one this one where a numeric domain is created i will give them a positive and negative value both the number slider you can delete this for now so to create a number slider from positive and negative you can just type minus 0 0.001 double dot one you can just type one right so it will create a slider from minus or uh, it is too many points so you can just shorten it also minus uh, 0 0.001 minus 0 0.001 double dot one right so you have both negative and positive values let's see what happens with this so I'll put this negative start point as this and uh, end domain can be positive, right? We will use these dimensions and let's see what happens if I put this in X. Now you see the rectangle size, I can, you know, it is going from one side to another side, positive to negative or you can just type minus uh, 0 0.05. Let's, let's make a side of that minus 0 0.05, 0 0.05, double dot 1. Okay, and uh, I can copy the same and make it plus 0 0.05. Or if you see, uh, yeah, we can do that. Let's see. Right, so x value is controlled by this, and I will use the same for the y value. Now, if you go there, you see you have a square from the center. That's what we did in the first place in the Rhino. But actually, we want to shift it. So if you do that, let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Okay, so you need to create a separate domain for this so that you can control them separately. So now see if I change this, you can see it is moving from this direction to this direction. You see here, if I change this, it goes back. So if I make it zero here, you see, then uh, this edge is aligned to the straight line. Also, uh, this kind of alignment is not possible in the curve pattern. So what we'll do, we'll create it separately in Rhino. Uh, and we will uh, remove these points from the list through the list method, which I have shown you before also how to, you know, add and subtract points which you want and which you don't want. So we will do that later. First, we will see how to align this as we have done previously in the Rhino. So this edge is aligned, but the total the, uh, length of this square is uh, almost, you know, point, you know, point 0.1 because we have taken the midpoint as 0 0.05 previously. So this is 0. We'll keep this as zero. This is along the y direction, y size, and uh, we will change this. I will double click this to open the number slider option, and in the minimum, I will change it to minus 0.1, right? And we'll move my slider back, and you'll see I got the square. Now, using the same method as we did before, we can we can actually create uh, the the member here at the bottom using this as a profile. So uh, but before that, let's remove these rectangles and see how it works. So I will use cull list, cull index, which actually removes the indexes. 
and I will import the list here. So the list is basically 73 rectangles. So if I see here, uh, if I bring my mouse, you will see there are 70, 73 rectangles. Let me bring the panel component and put it here. Oh, sorry, yeah. You will see there are 70, 73 number of rectangles. But I don't want all of them, as I said before. Uh, what if I want to, you know, only take the, which are aligned with this? And these are, you know, I will create manually later in Rhino and complete that. So for that, I will use curl index, curl index in which I put the list, but it requires the the list numbers which you want to remove. So for that, straight away I will use panel component and will, uh, you know, start typing the numbers. Let's start from the zero, which actually starts from this one. So this one is zero, one, two, three, four, five and 6 and 7. So basically 7 points I want to remove from the first. So 0, enter 1, enter 2, enter 3, enter 4, enter 5, enter 6. So total I have 7 points, right? And uh, I will put it there inside. Now you will see it will tell the data is not, uh, conversion is failed because this is just a panel. You need to convert into a proper data set which is making it, you know, right click, select right click and make it as a multi-line data. So automatically it will accept it by the index list. So when I select this new list, you will see that these points are automatically removed and the new list is selecting these new points only, right? Now these points, last seven points. So again, I will uh, click the panel and uh, start typing from the you know, bottom as you know it was 73 points so I will start with 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 6 points are done and 67 and now if you select the list you will see only the points, only these points are selected so that I can easily uh, you know swipe this along the rail. So this is and same thing we have to do for these curves which we have created, we don't want to take these uh, curves which are you know coming on the curve path of the bridge. So we will use the same point set. You can straight away copy this. Control C, Control V. Select this. Control C, Control V. And now instead of pouring this list, we need the list of the lines. Now if you select this, you will see only those curves are getting selected. So I'll bring this here. Right. These two. This is my rail and this is my section which I want to sweep. So straight away I will bring sweep component sweep through one rail it is same as uh, the sweep command in rhino almost similar components so it requires a rail this is the rail i will put it here and it requires sections so these are my sections there, there is an error here why let's see so whenever you get something like this you know uh, you are not able to match usually the issue is when you are not able to match the data that's why you know the error comes so uh, what could be the problem? You can just, you know, use the panel component, these, these panels to help you understand. So if I see the data here in this color index, uh, I will get something like this. And let's copy this, control C, control V, and see the data in this list. So the problem here is uh, these to swipe along these sections through every single line, I have to make individual branches or individual data set. So let me show you. So uh, first I will uh, remove this, I will disconnect. What I will do, I will just graft this data. So what happens in grafting, it actually creates separate individual data set, like separate branches. So this whole data set, consider it as a data tree and these are the branches, right? So earlier it was like full cluster of tree. So I have segregated them into separate branches, right? So separate section is attached to separate lines. Now, if I insert this data set, into the sweep rail and just because there are 60 points it will process it will take some time now you can see automatically all my you know these sections are sweeped along from the bottom right this is what we wanted so you choose which way you want which way is comfortable to you you can use grasshopper itself to do that that also i have shown then in grasshopper you can just create i will i invite you to you know create these sections on your own uh, using the same process you have to align these section along these lines make it perpendicular, swipe them along and uh, we'll move to the next step. Okay, so moving ahead, next step, uh, we need to create the ellipse. Uh, for that, what I will do, I will just use these grasshopper lines, I will bake them one by one and uh, use them in uh, Rhino and I will just uh, disable everything. You can bake 
all the lines if you have done in grasshopper otherwise if you are continuing in rhino it's okay we will just disable everything and i will bring back all my rhino lines so here it is uh, all my lines are intact with the truss and everything which we did the parapet and also i have added uh, you know the sections based on the images all the dimensions given here like the steel beam section uh, this one right the steel pipe sections and the bottom base pipe sections all the dimensions are given based on that i already put the sections there you can also do that and uh, then later on when the overall line work is completed we will give them thickness one by one so let's start making the ellipse uh, which is the main part of the bridge so i will just uh, sorry i will just open the images and we'll go to the front view and you can see this 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 pipe is actually the ellipse pipe so what i will do i will just Take the ellipse command first of all go to the top view type 0 to take the center and then we'll go to the front view okay let's start from here bring back the ellipse command uh, just take the center somewhere here and we'll use this as a point right and then in the top view i will see how much you know i want to expand just this is just eyeballing it there is no reference of the width and all those things i'm just you know taking it in the proportion right something like this and then similar if you want you can scale it down a little bit uh, when you scale command and take the center and just 9 0 0.98 just a little bit you know just to match it with these lines the images that's it right or where it's getting shorter i will keep it the same only i won't change now this is the basic reference of the ellipse you can see in perspective how it is coming this is what we wanted actually right so i will off the images now and uh, next thing which we need is to join the cables join the cables something like this you can see the ellipse is going on let me see yeah this picture is more clearer so these bigger cables then smaller cables you need to join it with the base the extension base base something like this right so uh, let's go back and do that so for that uh, we need an outer curve from both the sides right i will just select them and this ellipse and i will isolate these three elements so that you know it's more clear and easy I will zoom select it to make it the front now uh, we will start dividing with the bigger cables if you see the image here so there are these are the bigger cables right so on an average uh, 36 divisions are there you can try something else if you want in that just i'm taking a lump sum number right so what i will do i will first of all you need to split this ellipse i have done some modification in the ellipse you can set accordingly or you can uh, choose the shape and size of your own ellipse no problem even circle is also fine so what i have done is i have divided so for that you need to join the midpoints of the ellipse like this and then use split and it will ask you to select the objects to split so you can select it will select the whole ellipse right and then it will ask you to select the curve through which you want to split then you select this line and then spacebar again it will give you two different ellipses right just follow this step i will delete this line for now and i will take one half of this and uh, i will use or i will select both of them and i will use divide div spacebar number of segments already 36 are there so i will just press spacebar and when I get out, you will see these are divided into 36 parts. Now uh, we need to divide, join these lines. I will do it here in uh, Grasshopper set. Polyline, start from this point to this point. Right? And then the next thing is you need to give spacing of two, two cables. You see in the image, there are certain spacing. So what we'll do, we will consider there are two points and in, in them, we will be adding smaller cables later. So for that, we'll be leaving space from now. So this is join. Then starting from this point, I will give two space, two point space, and then join again, and then from and then vice versa. I will reverse it to other direction, right? So from here I join two space. And then I started uh, from the adjacent point from another cable, and then two space in here. So we'll continue this, right? Okay, so I have joined all the points like this, right? Now is the time to join intermediate smaller cables. 
right so for that before that keep them keep these you can make them as a group and keep them in uh, separate layers right make a bigger cable layer or something like that then what we need to do is uh, we need to divide this bottom again i think i missed the points yeah 36 points now to fill in these points okay so i will just select all the points you can use point selection i have shown you before also how to do that you can use the select points components it will select all the points there you can just put it in the assigned layer and we'll off it for now right so because we need to see further divisions so if you see in the image uh, the smaller cables are almost like let's say one two three four five six consider them six in numbers and you can see uh, here they are continuous but when they join on the other side uh, they have certain spread and you know spacing in between so we'll follow the same pattern like you know uh, here we will leave two two points so I can get this gap but on this side uh, which is which is the smaller side here we will use continuous cables right so uh, we need six more divisions on this so we need to increase the number of divisions so for that I will just I will do another division set uh, select both the curves I divide and this time I need six or 36 so straight away I will just type 36 into 6 right and spacebar you can see automatically by calculation it will give me those points it becomes easy to use them later now uh, as told before we will use the narrow one the cable continuous cable from the narrow side and we will leave two two gaps on the wider side right so let's start with that again polyline command uh, take the polyline command and uh, here you want to leave two space like this right leave two space join them continuous just follow up this pattern and this will follow on all the divisions starting from this point leaving two points this time you are not doing crisscross now you can see automatically we have got the divisions perfect right so you will follow for other divisions as, as well now this this side is narrower and this side is spread it so from this side the continuous cables will go on i hope this is clear for you and rest of the cables will be filled like this okay so i have joined all these points right now uh, the best thing is i also put them into layers if i bring my uh, cable the main cable i will just type it right main cables right these are the smaller uh, bigger ones and i have smaller cables also i have put them in layers uh, you can group them also that is best it will help later so i will select I will use the layer to selection like it's very easy just right click the layer which you want to select it will select all the objects in the same layer you can see and just type control G or you can go here on the left hand side which is group objects and hide it so bring both the cables now and uh, sorry now we need to select all of this and need to mirror this on other side as well so all my cable set is done so now you can see if I, I have done the group so it's easy to select selected this use hold shift select the other cables as well and just use mirror mi right these shortcuts are already placed you have to go to uh, standard tool set to mirror these objects or you can just type mi double r you have to type the full initial i have used the AutoCAD, imported the autocad shortcuts here in my previous videos you can see how i have done that now type zero and just you know hold your shift to get the mirror like this easy right so uh, you can see this triangle is coming up here which is you know similar to this and we are getting a good elliptical base for the bridge lines we have so it's easy for us to convert them into pipes super easy i will just you know previously you have, in the videos we have worked with the pipe command so it becomes easy if you have a curve you can easily convert them into pipe and the base things already thickness i have given uh, sections already are there so you can just use swipe, swipe to commands in rhino and do it we will do that in the end once we will solidify the whole thing right so this step is done now uh, i will unisolate the model uh, I, I have isolated these lines before so i will just use the you know unisolate command and this will bring all my trusses and uh, bridge platform which we have done and we will start giving thickness to them one by one right so um, it's good that we have put everything in layer so it will be easy for us to go one by one so let's say uh, i can uh, my ellipse is here right i will select this and we'll isolate again just to see it very clearly what's happening 
and then uh, as I said, it's easy to give a, you know piping thickness when you have a curve. Just straight away use the pipe command, spacebar. Pipe radius is one meters as my units are meters. Uh, it's too much, so uh, you can go like let's say 0.3 something. Seems good, right? Now let's unisolate everything and see. Yeah. What else next is uh, these bigger pipes, right? So, sorry, just hold shift and you know, select them and isolate them again, right? So, you'll give some thickness to them. Pipe, spacebar, let's say I will just, you know, give it half of the, that bigger ellipse, so 0.15. Good, right? Same we will do for these pipe 0.15 already there. Space bar, you got this now. And isolate again and see the whole thing. Good, coming out nice. Then come these smaller cables. So we will select both of them, right? And isolate again and see. Okay, these are very thin. If you have seen the images, so it can be around let's say pipe command and you see. 0 0.05 something, yeah, it works out fine. Nice it again. Okay, looks looks good to me. So cables are done, right? Now comes the bridge and the parapet parts. Okay, so we'll do that. So we will put the these ellipses in the same layer as their curves, right? I am in full control of the solids as well. And these are the main cables, right? I will isolate them. And I will pipe them 0.15 and we'll select the whole thing and put it into and then I'll isolate again, right? Now if I hide, yeah, that's what working. And same way I will select these smaller cables. Sorry, uh, and isolate them. They are smaller cables, right? So I will select and pipe them to 0.05, right? Select everything again and put them back to the smaller cables and I'm isolate the whole model hide this okay so everything is properly engaged I can just you know whenever I want I can just bring it back to see the whole thing main cables and ellipse right so I will hide it back and uh, you know concentrate on my uh, sections here now just uh, taking a smaller reference based on these images just lump summing it around I will start with edge pipes here. You can see auto steel pipe, the radius is 8 centimeter. So I will bring these curves, right, and uh, we'll isolate it. Go to curve, make a separate layer for them, edge pipes, and put them in the same layer. And we'll use pipe, right, 0 0.08. Cool, right? You can see the my, my pipe is com coming solid because let me go back. Pipe, select rails. Sorry, pipe, and uh, you can see my cap is flat. That's why it is solid. If I say none, then it won't be right. Or if I want rounded edges, then I can do that. But currently, it's flat. That's why it is, it is coming as a solid flat. So you select this right away here only itself, and put it back in the you know um, the edge pipe. Previously, we struggled with that. So now this whole uh, this thing is under the layer. Now we can uh, unisolate everything, and you can see here. Right, so this piping is done. Let's see what's next. Uh, now the bottom one, this one, you see this pipe it is around uh, 12 centimeter. So uh, let's do that. So this is the bottom truss which is holding everything, the whole truss system. Right, this is the line, this is the curve. Okay, you can see, but you can relate better from this side. Actually, you know, something like this. I will again straight away instead of any confusions, you select the curve. This is like I have created a group of layers. It is better to you know structure your uh, layer to you know layer manager so it's easy for you to find which areas specifically you want to you know touch from the model so like this is all curves and all you can make it better more structured like within the curves i uh, these are only curves and this curves and solid i sh actually i should write in the curves uh i need another division so if i select if i want to make sub layer i have to select the main layer if i select this and then go to the sub layer it will create sub layer within that which i don't want but I want uh, under this one head, so I'll select it, select it, and we'll use another sub layer. And I was going to create the base pipe, right? 
base pipe and put that layer into that I curve into this and and then isolate again and then use the pipe right so as you saw it was around uh, 12 centimeters so 0.12 right let's see again pipe select the rail 0.12 yeah and then right away put everything in the same layer and bring back the whole model and isolate good so same way uh, i have put down sections everywhere you can also use the same reference like this section and, and uh, the baseline this is the section now you can see i have uh, given thickness to all of them right i invite you to do it yourself to understand the thing right how to create this surface if you see uh, the bottom plus system i have given it rounded as i showed you you know it, instead of flat you can also have a rounded just because i am ending this i have given that that is not the part of the detail of the actual design and this section you can see the bottom one which is coming here if you see in the image right this one which is just touching the deck okay we use the almost similar dimension and these are the truss and members all curves we have already created you just need to give thickness to them handrails also we did you 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 have done that also you know how it is coming you have done this section also right you understood how we have created that on top of it i have just created the surface you know give it some thickness to give a bridge base and we have a good similar bridge as we have seen in the images something like this great right uh practice with this guys and if you have any doubts uh if you got stuck somewhere in certain stage please let me know i can help you with some uh, guidance so that you can move ahead most of the steps are very much clear i you know some parts i have left out especially to give thickness and all these pipes these lines also the straight cables right these lines already we did in the first part so you can make use of the reference of this image you know like this section this is straighter one which i have done here right if you want i can just show you the dimensions which i have taken you can follow the same so this is around 0 0.05 yes 0 0.05 or 0 0.05 square same for the same for the hand this section also handrail we, we took uh, the same dimensions right 0 0.05 exactly so build with this and see what you got and please uh, share your doubts in the comment section uh, we'll see you with another interesting exercise till then bye bye keep practicing